Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Sages and the moderators for the opportunity to present. I have no disclosures. <coughs> so gastroesophageal reflux disease is prevalent in the, in the United States. About one in five uh, Americans are uh, affected by the condition. Uh, laparoscopic fund applications uh, traditionally been the mainstay uh, with good long-term outcomes up to 90% uh, success in long-term series, both objective and uh, patient-reported outcomes. Uh, we know that obesity contributes to development of GERD and that there's a higher rate uh, of reflux among the obese. And we also know that uh, Roux-en-Y gastric bypass is an effective treatment for both of these uh, conditions, uh, uh, obesity and uh, reflux. In general, a failure of the fund application is relatively uncommon, but in that situation, uh, generally surgeons have uh, several options, including a redo fund application as well as a conversion to a bypass at that point. And actually, there have been su studies uh, looking at both of these uh, options and that, that seem to be safe and effective uh, after a, a failed initial fund application. So our objective was to characterize the rates and patterns of these reoperative procedures uh, in the state of New York, and also to identify risk factors that may be associated with needing a revisional procedure after an initial fund application. So we used a New York statewide database called Sparks, and we looked at all fund applications performed using procedure codes over a 10-year period in adults 18 uh, years of age or older. And we excluded patients that had duplicate entries in the, in the database, as well as those that suffered in-hospital mortality, and that uh, resulted in over 12,000 patients. We then performed the same search uh, with the same criteria, but substituted bypass for the fund application procedure codes in order to identify patients who had undergone a bypass after the initial fund application. Uh, and we did this by matching up the patient IDs, date of birth, and gender in order to uh, identify those patients. And that uh, resulted in 53 patients. We then excluded patients who were lost to follow-up that we defined as those who did not have any data entries for any uh, encounter types in the database from th three years uh, and onward after the initial fund application. And we use that three-year time point because that was the average time uh, to a revisional procedure. And that actually resulted in 3,000 patients being excluded, which left us with 9462 in the current analysis. So the outcomes that we uh, looked at in this present study was the rates and patterns of these reoperative procedures uh, and uh, the uh, subsequent revisions, as well as using a uh, logistic regression model to identify risk factors that may be associated with the need for a reoperation. So in terms of our results, we had 9462 patients. Uh, mean follow-up was 8.3 years with a range of 3 to 15. Overall, uh, 430 patients out of that uh, 9462 required one or more reoperation of any kind, which gives a rate of 4.5% reoperation over that time period. Of that 430 patients that needed a reoperation, 46 of them were converted to a bypass at the time of their first reoperative procedure. The remainder went uh, underwent a redo fund application. And then an additional five patients had undergone conversion to a bypass at a later point after having undergone a redo, one or more redo fund applications prior to the conversion. So a total of 51 patients, 46 initially plus another five eventually, a total of 51 patients at any point were eventually converted to a bypass, which amounts to 12% of those that needed a reoperation at any point. And this table basically summarizes the pattern of reoperation. So F stands for fund application, the B is for bypass. And you can see, again, 95% of patients just had their initial fund application, never had any reoperation. The most common pattern of reoperation was a single uh, revision in the form of a redo fund application. Uh, following that was a fund application followed by a bypass in those 46 patients that were, again, initially converted to a bypass. Uh, I will turn your attention to the kind of bottom half of the of the table. And these 35 patients, as you can see very clearly, had two or more revisional foregut procedures amounting to three or four foregut operations over the time uh, time period of the study. <clears throat> we also wanted to look at the relationship of obesity relative to these rates and uh, patterns. So 
8% of the entire 9,462 cohort were obese or morbidly obese at the time of their initial primary fundoplication, 778 patients. We looked at whether or not those patients had a higher rate of needing a reoperative procedure, and that was not the case. There was no difference between the obese, morbidly obese, or their non-obese counterparts. We also looked at whether or not the patients who underwent a redo fund application uh, between the obese and non-obese had a, a, a different rate of reoperation, and again, there was no difference. Interestingly, 8% of the patients that underwent a redo fund application were obese or morbidly obese. And not unexpectedly, the majority, 86% of patients who were converted to a bypass were obese. We also looked at the timing of when the reoperation was performed. So overall, any reoperation was done just under three years from the time of the initial fundoplication, with a range of zero to fi almost 15 years. Redo fundoplication as a specific revisional procedure was done a little earlier at a mean of 2.5 years. Contrasted with the bypass, a conversion to a ruin Y was done at a mean of 6.6 .6 years, again, from the time of the initial fundoplication. We also looked in terms of our secondary outcomes, again, trying to identify any risk factors that may be associated with the need for a reoperative procedure. So we looked at demographic data, comorbidities, and complications at the time of the initial fundoplication, and we compared that between patients who did not require uh, a reoperation versus those that did. And in the uh, middle bullet here, you see the, the uh, variables that were found to be uh, significant at the first pass of our analysis. And then we applied these variables to a multivariable logistic regression and controlled for confounders. And that data is summarized in this table here uh, with the red uh, uh, variables highlighted uh, showing statistical significance. So age, specifically 30 to 49 versus 70 plus. I'm sorry, that's not projecting very well in terms of the red, but uh, age 30 to 49 versus 70, 50 to 69 uh, versus 70, female gender, and then the presence of uh, chronic pulmonary disease were all risk factors uh, in terms of an association with having a reoperative procedure. And of note, the 30 to 49 age range uh, was the strongest with an odds ratio of two. So in, sure. so in conclusion, uh, Primary laparoscopic fundoplication for reflux disease uh, has a relatively low reoperation rate over a 15 year, uh, up to 15 year follow up in this study. Most patients who required a reoperation just underwent a single reoperation in the form of a redo fundoplication. Obesity was not predictive of the need for a revision in terms of uh, after an initial fundoplication or even after a redo fundoplication versus the non obese counterparts. Uh, if the revision, revision to or conversion, I should say, to a bypass was done, there were no procedures performed after that. Uh, and as we saw, conversion to bypass is done at a later time point uh, than was redo fund application. And finally, uh, younger age, female gender, and chronic uh, pulmonary disease were associated with a reoperation. The study is not without limitations. It's an observational analysis, so it has its inherent biases and uh, uh, limitations in generalizability, although it is a uh, statewide database, so it's more inclusive than a single institution study. There was a significant number of patients who were lost to follow-up. Uh, baseline characteristics in terms of the severity of the GERD or any presence of dysmotility was not factored and certainly is an um, important uh, point. Partial versus complete fund application was not differentiated, as were other technical aspects of the uh, uh, primary fund application, whether or not there was a hiatal hernia, was an esophageal lengthening procedure needing to be performed. And then finally, um, when patients were converted to a bypass, it was unclear uh, whether or not it was for refractory reflux or just due to obesity or obesity-related comorbidities. Thank you.